Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make the silverware holder. It is with upcycled and Dollar Tree products only. And it was inspired by this Holloway four-piece caddy, um, silverware caddy from Birch Lane. And the price was $32.99 on sale. So that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so first thing we're going to need is these three clip holders from the Dollar Tree. I got them in black. These three wire baskets, which we actually use for another project, but we're going to use their handles. Three jars. Um, I had these three leftover upcycled salsa jars from Aldi's, but you can find these mason jars at the Dollar Tree. And just make sure that they fit inside the clip cup. Um, you also need some zip ties. They only had white ones, but if you get black, that'd be easier than coloring them, or I used a permanent marker to color them. And then you're gonna need something to wrap the circle handle around. I used this um, rolling pin, because I like the diameter. You'll also need a pair of pliers just to help you out. All right, so I wanna let you know quick that um, first thing we need to do is take the handles off these baskets, because that's the only part we're gonna use. and the one for $32.99 that was originally $52 um, is utilitarian, not just decorative. And ours will hold the silverware, but I don't recommend picking it up by the handle. Um, these handles are, this metal on this handle, you'll see is very manipulative. And um, I just couldn't find a way to make it really structurally um, firm to carry all that silverware. But you know, you can carry it around by this base. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pliers at the very joint and we're gonna straighten out the pieces. What you do is you wanna put your pliers right up against the elbow and just bend. Like I said, they do bend very easily. Um, these ones are coated with wire, with uh, vinyl, I think. And um, if you peeled back the vinyl, they were black underneath. But what I wanna show you is that there's a seam on the cups so we're gonna turn all the seams towards the inside. All right, and then I'm trying to figure out how best to put in the zip ties. So we're actually gonna start and have all the zip tie uh, connectors be in the middle of the three different silverware holders. I mean paper clip holders. So um, one of the things that I would suggest if you don't find the black zip ties, I show you later in the video I colored them with a black Sharpie. Um, I would go ahead and do that first. Originally, I was like, oh, I'll just call them afterwards, but it is a little hard to get your magic marker in there. Or you could also just spray paint them when they're done. Or to be honest with you, you don't really notice the white plastic in the middle. Um, I went ahead and I, that little line right there inside of the strap, I went ahead and I colored that in black with the Sharpie. And then the big cluster in the middle kind of gets hidden by the handles. All right, and then you're just gonna keep adding where they ever they meet. Um, if you see here, I'm just lining up to figure out the right position so that they're all equal. And the one thing that I will tell you is you want the zip tie to be located in the same place for each holder so that it's balanced. And if you see here, I'm just under the first row and I've skipped one hole. So what you basically do is you come in from the outside along the top row skip one hole and go back out the outside. Make sure you go through your second container the same way. You basically wanna go back through the second container at the top row, skip one hole and come back out. And on your way back out, you can feed the edge through the zip tie block and then pull tight. And the problem that I'm having right here that I'm resolving is it is important that your zip tie doesn't get twisted so that it does ratchet. Um, you want it to be flat across the, the entire way around. You want to make sure that it doesn't get twisted because then you'll have twisties between your um, things and they won't sit close together. So if you saw it just there, I zoomed into like just feed it through the zip tie and pull tight. This is the last, actually it's the second to last one, but I'm attaching the last uh, container. All right, and I just check for levelness, check that they're laying flat. Um, your, that your zip ties are in the proper position. And what I did for sure is I laid it flat before I added, uh, connected the last two pieces, all right? And as you see here, I'm using the pliers to um, assist me in pulling it through. This happens sometimes when the, the hole that you choose 
could be a little smaller. The zip tie still fits through. Sometimes you just need assistance. If you have a good grip with good fingertips, then you go ahead and pull. But um, it's okay to go ahead and use your pliers to help out, okay? So that's how it looks with the three of them connected. And then I'm coloring in the insides of the containers wherever their white zip tie is. But again, if you pre-color your zip ties or if you use black ones, this step is not necessary. And I'm just trying to knock down some of the whiteness. Um, like I've said before, once I add the middle, I realize you really don't see the whiteness all that much. Um, I mean the holder, but you go ahead and whatever you're comfortable doing. I do personally wish that I would have went back and colored them or held out for black zip ties. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take the one handle and you're going to, I measured one and a quarter inches and then I bent because you want the piece after it's bent to be one and a half inches and it won't bend sharp on a dime. So you measure one and a quarter inches, you put your pliers at the one and a quarter inch mark and you bend at a, um, I figured the angle out yesterday. I don't know. You bend it at a, tri you're going to make a triangle. So, um, and then you do the same thing, measure one and a quarter inches, put your pliers there and then bend at a triangle. Okay. So after you get your three angles bent, and go ahead and manipulate it with your fingers into the shape of a triangle. And basically what this is going to do is this triangle is going to insert up underneath the three baskets and it's going to catch on the zip ties and um, it, the triangle is going to be bigger than the space so it will hold up the three, the three baskets. All right. Then you want to do is you want to do um, a fourth bend about halfway through the middle of the triangle so that the... Um, piece that comes straight up to connect to the handle um, comes straight up through the middle of the triangle okay so you see here we went underneath and we came through and make sure it's in like a nice straight steady area if you have where it doesn't really look like it's sitting right you can turn it turn the triangle maybe it'll sit right in a um, in a different location or, or with the sides against different baskets and then um, if your stick doesn't lay straight, just leave that until the end. Once we get this zip tied in, again, because it is so bendy, you can go ahead and manipulate that. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add more zip ties. <laughs> we're going to do the same thing where we went um, from underneath, but in the inside of the three triangles. Why do I keep saying that? The, from the inside of the three baskets, you want to um, put the zip tie underneath that triangle that we just made and you want to pull it into the basket, out of the basket, over one hole, and over the metal rod. Is that makes sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're zip tying through the basket around the one wall of the triangle that matches up to the basket to secure the baskets to the handle. Now that probably makes sense. <laughs> and. Um, what you want to do is you want to be able to make sure that you can get in there. So um, it, it, to me, it was super easy because this was actually like my seventh zip tie because I messed up like four of them. So I was a lot of expert at zip ties by the time I got to this anyway. <laughs> I wish I had unlimited time to show you the blooper reel. I really do. But um, one thing that's really important that you guys need to know is that I found out that when this holder was full, when I'm finished and it's full of the three jars that have all the silverware in it, the center support is not really um, strong enough to hold a heavy thing. I mean, obviously it's a very manipulative piece of metal, so you could probably have imagined that. The center support will be um, to carry it when it's empty or merely for decorative purposes, all right? So what's happening here, you could see that, um, remember how I said that the end of the zip tie needs to be um, below the part of the upright that's going across. Um, it was just moving on me. So just make sure again that you have um, from the bottom to the top will be the butt end of the zip tie, um, then the metal thing, and then the zip tie will come back around and fasten to the underneath. And now we're going to cut off the ends of the zip ties that we just used to hold the center support onto the baskets. And then I'm also going to go in and um, color those black as well. And again, I went, I turned it upside down to start coloring the underneath black, but I realized that you really can't see it. It's just what's inside the baskets 
what's inside those round cups is what you see the most. So I just went ahead and colored those. But again, third time's a charm. I recommend you use that black marker and you color them first. It's probably the easiest thing to do. And you can see here, now that it's all fastened, you can go ahead and adjust um, that center rod for level. Now we're gonna take the second handle. And originally I said they would use three handles, but we ended up only using two. Um, but we're still using the three baskets for another DIY, so that's not going to waste. Now I'm taking the pliers and I'm slowly pinching around and trying to bend um, a perfect circle. I don't know that you can really bend a perfect circle, but I'm trying to give it some um, a head start, basically. And I'm going to use this rolling pin. As you can see, it's just me pulling the ends really tight to kind of look how pretty that circle came out. You guys think I'm so talented, but you guys just saw me do that. That took zero skill. Um, <laughs> it's just a little patience. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the ends off and I'm gonna leave about, I think like about a half an inch. I didn't actually measure, but a half an inch on each side because what we're gonna do, oh, oh yeah, first bend it. Sorry guys. <laughs> I am so sorry. So you hold the pliers at where you want to make the joint where the two um, the two circle ends cross over and you bend it at a um, 45 degree angle okay a 90 degree angle 90 degree I'm sorry and then um, we're gonna end up cutting leaving about a uh, half an inch uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two little loop ends just like we're on the original basket handle to connect to each other and then to connect to the upright all right so it just took a minute. Uh, most pliers do have sort of a wire cutter down in their joint. Um, what I did was I grabbed where I wanted it to go, made sure I cut through the plastic. I spun the metal around to score it. My dad taught me this technique. And then eventually I scored it enough that I was able to bend it back and forth to break it. So if you see here, there you go. And it snaps right off. And they could be a little bit of sharp edges there. And if, you've, if you're concerned about that, you know, you could always cover them with tape. But um, to me, it's not going to be someplace where you're going to grab it anyway. So if you see here, I'm just bending each one towards in opposite directions. So I can hook them on. And then I'm going to take the pliers. I'm going to bend each one down into its loop. And you just bend it back onto itself. Okay. And then once we're done doing this, then we're going to attach it to the hook at the end of the upright. All right, so just be careful. Um, try to leave yourself a little tiny, see that little tiny space that's going to go on this loop. So that little hook from the, um, the basket, um, just opening it up a tiny bit if you need to. Some of them are, I noticed, are a little tighter than others, closed more than others, excuse me. So I'm opening just enough and I'm fitting that wire right in one of the loops and it's going to hold so nice and tight. I couldn't believe you might have to play with this um, when you're at home doing it for yourself. Um, and then I close the loop from the upright back onto the ring and then that's it. And then I just adjusted. Now the original had like a twisted wire, but the twisted wire wasn't very thick. It just was stronger. Um, but I didn't think that that was necessary. And also, um, I think that it looks, I think that it looks really good. And then these jars, um, I, you guys saw were leftover salsa jars that originally I swore fit in the bottom perfectly, but they don't really fit in the bottom perfectly. So they weren't always standing up straight. But um, as you can see, when I just put the spoons in, how it wiggled, but that's okay. It still has the same effect for free. But like I said, it holds pint size Kerr or ball mason jars. Um, the traditional pint size with the regular, um, mouths and, um, they have them at the Dollar Tree, just plain ones with no writing on them. So, um, that's it. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I'm sure you guys will have questions. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe and join the family. And if you do click that little notification bell, that will let you know when I upload a video, I'll be in your inbox. Okay. So as always, you guys, you take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye.